Well, hello friends, I hope you're having a great day today. Well, happy Wednesday and happy hump day to you. And welcome to another edition of Take 5. We are still dealing with the subject we've entitled Living by Faith. Um, we're about to wind this series down, probably be just one or two more weeks of Take 5 devotions, and then we'll be moving on into another direction. Uh, but right now, this series that we've been in, I'm, I'm really been kind of thankful for it. There's, there's been a lot of things that have been revealed and uncovered for us in the Word of God. As we have looked at the men and women mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, we've learned a lot of valuable lessons and still are. This week, we're talking about the last two men that are named there. That's, uh, you'll find that in Hebrews 11.32. We're talking about Samuel and David. We've already talked about Samuel on Monday and Tuesday. We're going to spend the rest of the week talking about David. Now, just like I told you previously, there is entirely too much to cover on the life of these two men. Their lives cover all of First and Second Samuel and then a couple of chapters into First Kings. So that should be some good reading, some good homework, some good personal devotion time for you to spend looking at the lives of these men. <clears throat> The facts of faith that we're going to cover are just a few in comparison to what you'll find if you'll just open up the Word of God and look at the life of these two great men. Now, we've already talked about Samuel. I said that. Now, we're going to deal with David and look at some facts about his life um, for the rest of the week. Now, David was the second king of Israel, and he was a great and godly man. The Bible said there was really only two things that David did wrong, and that was uh, his adultery with Bathsheba that he tried to cover up with murder and deceit. And then there was a time uh, when David counted his troops to make sure that he had enough to win the victory over his enemies instead of trusting God. And in both of these... And through all the consequences that David reaped to himself because of this, the Bible still says that David was a man after God's own heart. He loved God with a passion that you just really don't find anymore. And like Samuel, that passion for God started at a very early age. I can't say that enough. Over and over, it's come up in this subject of faith from, from the various men and women that we've talked about. It, it is so needful that children get launched and started out on their life of faith at an early age and parents, we've got the responsibility of teaching them and living it in front of them. <clears throat> so David was one of those that started out very young in his walk with God, which, which really brings us to the fact of faith that we want to begin with today. And that's simply this, God sometimes chooses the most insignificant because of their faith. And that's really what David was in his whole family. He was one of eight brothers and he was the youngest and he was the most insignificant. When God grew tired of Saul's insubordination and disobedience and rebellion, he told Samuel to fill his horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse because he had chosen a new king there and Samuel was to go down and anoint him. So Samuel fills the horn with oil and he tells Jesse to consecrate all of his sons because they are coming, they're going to have a sacrifice and a feast and he's going to anoint one of those boys into to the service of the Lord. He didn't tell him what. He just said one of them was going to be anointed into the service of the Lord. <clears throat> Samuel gets to Jesse's house. As he gets there, Samuel uh, does and has Jesse do what most would do. They start with the oldest and they bring them through there for Samuel to look at and listen to the voice of God. And so they start with Eliab, who is the oldest brother and the biggest and the strongest and the tallest and brings him through. And Samuel looks at him and says to himself, this surely must be the one. Look at this guy. He's a picture of health and strength. 
And God says to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't look on things like people look at. People look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So Samuel passed him on through and said, send me the next one. Then Abinadab, the next oldest, comes through. And the Lord says, this is not the one. Then Shammah, the next oldest, comes through. And the Lord says, this is not uh, the one. And seven of Jesse's sons passed through. And every time God told the prophet Samuel, this is not the one. And so finally, exasperated, Samuel says, do you have any more sons? And Jesse says, yeah, I've got the most insignificant one. I've got the one that's the youngest and he's doing the most insignificant job as well. He's out tending my sheep. And Samuel said, I'm not going to go home till you bring him in here. So they sent for David and brought him in. And when he came into the house there, God said, this is the one anoint him. So Samuel took the horn of oil and poured it on David and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Bible said, from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. He was the most insignificant one. He was the one that was voted least likely, as it were. He, he was the one. David wasn't even consecrated for this sacrifice or this feast that Samuel was holding there. He wasn't even invited. He was left to tend the sheep. But God chose him as insignificant as he was because God saw his heart and he knew that while on the outside he looked insignificant, on the inside there was the heart of a king. And God chose the most insignificant because of faith. Moving on to one more fact of faith for today. Sometimes faith doesn't know what it's chosen for. It's just ready to serve. You know, in the passage that talks about David being anointed and chosen above his brothers there, you will find nowhere in there where Samuel told anyone what he had come to anoint them for. He was just there to anoint one that had been chosen by God, but he didn't say anything about being king or general or president or pastor or priest or prophet or anything. He didn't say anything. He's just there to anoint one that's been chosen by God and David was ready. It takes real faith to volunteer for service when you don't know what you're volunteering for. Now, I don't know if if God had revealed to David's spirit what his divine calling was or not. I, I don't know. But I do know this. The first place you find David after he was anointed was not out killing giants and it wasn't being crowned king. The first place you find him is, is playing his harp to calm the evil spirit that was tormenting King Saul. He was Saul's armor bearer long before he ever became king. Even when David showed up for the battle, when the Philistines and the Israelites were at war and Goliath was in the valley, he had not come there to fight. He had come there to bring bread and food to his brothers and to see how they were doing. David didn't care what he was called for. David didn't care what he was anointed for. His faith was just ready to serve. David's calling was special to him, not because of what it was, but because of who had called him. It takes faith to volunteer to serve for something when you don't even know what it is. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. Look forward to being with you tomorrow on Thursday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never, ever fail you.